Hey guys, it's Christine Leahy, another episode of Keeping Social. I have a really special guest on. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Sherry Bellinger, she is the owner of Bell Seren Salon in La Jolla and also has been doing my hair for how long? Like eight years? At this probably point. about yeah. eight years yeah. <laughs> and I love her so much I literally drive if you followed me over the years I drive to La Jolla to go get my hair done um but I wanted to talk to you uh, we'll get your hair tips later for what's going on right now but also just as a small business owner because this is an extremely tough time um mm -hmm. and in California they just issued a stay-at-home order which mandate mandates that all non-essential businesses close You've yeah. had your business closed for about a week now, right? I decided to close on Monday this past week. So that was before everyone was telling you that you had to close down. So what kind of things went into yeah. the decision to close it? You know, I think the more you learn about the virus and that you can have it and not know for so long um, and with the social distancing stuff, it just it started feeling wrong to remain open. I mean, it's like we can be as sanitary and clean as we want, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, we're right with each other. You can't social distance. And it just started feeling icky. And I just, I kind of felt that I had to take a stand. I didn't see any other salons doing it yet. And um, I just went for it and trusted my gut and, and uh, the response was really good, but I knew this was coming. I just wanted to try to get ahead of it and do our part in the community. I think you and I were actually texting that night right before kind of as you were making the decision. And um, yeah. we talked about, as you said, there were a lot of other salons staying open and it kind of made it difficult because it, you weren't being told to close. Totally. Other salons are staying open. But you have to make the decision as an owner to do that, knowing that your employees are going to be affected. Yeah. So what kind of things obviously were coming up with, um, with your employees? They, they're obviously relying on money. They make yeah. tips, commission. How did, yeah. how did you go through that? You know, it's, they were super supportive too. I think, um, thank God they are employees. You know, I would say most salons, at least in California, uh, stylists are self-employed. So, you know, the self-employed stylists that have fixed expenses and rent and no revenue, no unemployment, um, they're terrified. Um, at least my crew has unemployment. I'm going to pay sick pay. So, you know, when I did the numbers and math, I'm like, okay, they're going to be taken care of. Um, at least for a month. Um, and at least there is some unemployment, but, um, you know, it just, we keep learning more and more as it unfolds and we don't really know how long we're going to be unemployed. But, um, in my industry, it's kind of like a lot of self-employed people or, um, people who rely on tips, like you said, I mean, are just, um, not really know what's going to happen, what the future is. Um, so yeah, it's pretty sad. So you're personally paying for their sick pay. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I will be paying personally. So unemployment through the state and yeah, that's one of those, um, expenses as a small business owner, um, that we have to take on. And luckily I'm set up. Okay. Where it's going to be okay. Um, and it makes me feel good. I'm kind of like the mama and I um, am glad to do that. Um, but it's huge. I mean, the expense, the loss is, um, it's like catastrophic. And I feel so sad for so many small business owners that maybe weren't as busy or maybe they were struggling and they're just put in these terrible spots. And, you know, we have these giant rents and overhead that we have to continue paying. And um, so, yeah. I've talked to some of you know my other friends who own businesses and they were saying that they're making the tough decision of, okay, do I lay off my employees prior to today, obviously, um, or is it actually better if I lay them off because then they can get unemployment? So mm -hmm. you had to go through that kind of decision as well. Yeah. And I, I mean, I talked to my attorney before doing it and, you know, to me, in my mind, they're not really laid off you know this is all temporary we're all in survival doing what we have to do and 
they're my team and family. And as soon as I can open my doors, you know, they have their job. Um, so it's just kind of this funny spot we're in. So I don't, I don't want to feel unemployed. I want to have their home to come back to. How concerned are you for your business? I'm not concerned for my business. Um, I'm concerned for my industry. Um, again, just with all the self-employed, uh, an employee-based commission salon takes up a real small percentage, um, I would say, at least in California. But, um, you know, we're busy and we, um, you know, the salon is successful and I've been smart. I was smart <laughs> from the get-go always. So we're going to be okay. Um, as a business, I think of the independent stylists who really rely on that income. And, you know, they've been put in a tough spot until I guess today, now that we finally are told that we can't do our job, but they've been put in this spot where it's like, you know, survival, I have to feed my kid. You know, I, I don't, I, I know I'm not supposed to be out and I'm supposed to social distance, but like, I can't survive. And it sucks that um, we're seeing people put in that spot and, you know, people who know that they might be doing more harm than good having to make these calls. And, you know, it's just, it's just so crummy. You've always uh, given out advice about your business and you're, you're not, I, I love that because I think a lot of really successful people want to hold on to all their secrets, but you always give them out for other, um, salon business owners or people in the beauty industry, is there advice that you would give to them right now? I think we just, we have to keep looking forward. I think, I mean, this is uncharted waters, you know, like what advice is there to give except you just, you have to have faith. And, you know, I think when suddenly money gets real tight, you'd be surprised where you can save. Um, and we're forced to save. We really can't go spend money right now. And I think we just have to have faith that things will continue to pop up that will help us. You know, I've seen um, that people can pay rents later or just kind of beautiful like angel stories of people wanting to help out. So I think instead of thinking of the worst case scenario, you just have to remember why you started and just don't lose faith. And, you know, we don't, we don't know what's ahead, but I don't think this story is going to end that we all just fail and crumble and, and that's it, you know, it can't. So I think we just have to take it day by day and know that we are all not alone in this. Um, and we just have to keep positive. What are you doing every day? Cause now you're at home. So you go from being in the salon and running it and you, and you'd still do hair, you do my hair. Um, now you're home with your baby, your husband. So what do, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of keep your sanity? Well, now it's kind of random because my husband, he already works from home and his work is still going. So we're like in this weird double life where his life is normal and my world has flipped upside down. Um, and so I'm like a stay at home mom all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> just running after my year and a half old all day long trying to entertain her which is sweet um but just yeah trying to uh not get too sucked up in social media and the news and just find the the light in the day of spending time with my daughter and um yeah it's weird it's really weird i'm like what do i you know like today on the salon's instagram and like we have a big instagram presence and i'm like i'm not gonna post hair like what what the <laughs> hell do i post like what what do we even do? And then when I see people still posting, like nothing's happening, it just feels weird. It does. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a weird balance. I think some people are saying, okay, you want an escape from talking about coronavirus, so I'm just going to post regular content. And then that feels weird. But then if you talk about coronavirus yeah. the whole time, that's depressing. Yeah. It's hard it's to know like, what to do. Yeah. You just, I think we all just take it as it comes and post what feels right in the moment. And um, for me, I'm just gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep it a little bit more just real and raw with what's going on. Yeah, what I kind, of, what kind of things are you, are you sharing with your Instagram? I mean, 
like today, you know, I've been keeping in touch with my team and I'm like, all right, what are you guys, what movies, what shows, like, you know, let's just kind of share what we're doing. And so I posted something about, you know, what we're kind of watching to distract us from everything going on and probably a little bit more like that. Are you, so I know we had to reschedule my hair appointment yeah. uh, <laughs> and we got uh, the video connection. There we go. Um, we thought maybe April <laughs> we, would, yeah. we would be able to, how realistic do you think it is for your clients to be back in April? Um, I just had that conversation with my, my team today because we've spent hours already trying to reschedule um, our guests. They have uh, kind of a large team and they're really busy and, you know, we've only chipped away at a few days and we're, you know, pulling strings to fit people in in April. And I'm just, I kind of hit this crossroads. Like, why are we doing this when we don't know an open date? Like, I think we all can... Um, pretend that we hope that we're open April, whatever, but we don't know. So, um, that's actually on my agenda tomorrow is, uh, I don't think we're going to give a date. I think we're just going to contact everybody and we all collectively will be taking it one day at a time. And as soon as we have any sort of green light, we'll just, uh, rebook, but yeah, it's wild. <laughs> Well, when places are able to open again, and we can kind of switch to the more lighthearted side of this, because we got to find some yeah. fun stuff to talk about in, in these times, but women are going to be flocking to the salon. And, when the salon well, and then there's that. They're either going to show up with like <laughs> the worst roots, or they're going to show up with like messed up color because they took it upon themselves to box dye. And it's yeah. going to be, it's own new set of problems for hairdressers. Yeah, so but. that's what I wanted to talk to you about uh, with that, because I think we're going to see what color everyone's hair really yeah. is. Ain't that the truth. Um, and for some, None it, of us are hiding. <laughs> no, it's, it's, our nails are going to be bad, our hair. I mean, that's Everything the least of our eyebrows. Concerns. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But what would you say for women who are concerned about their roots and want to reach for the box dye. You just can't. Like <laughs> this has to be this beautifully humbling time for all of us, cause we're all in it. And I mean, box dye is devil. If you have not been using it and your hairdresser has a thing going on your hair, um, you can't trust the box. You and I have talked about this at length, even though it says on the box what to do, it doesn't know your hair, right? It doesn't know your hair and semi-permanent is not semi-permanent. Like color does not just wash out. So you can't just magically want to become a redhead while quarantined and then it wash out and become blonde again. So it's just, it's not worth it. I think if it comes to it, say we really are on lockdown for that long, us hairdressers are going to have to come up with something creative virtually to teach our clients how to do their roots okay. you know i think if it is like a gray situation right like maybe we can get our hands on the color and ship it and have a virtual sort of consultation like if it gets that bad that might have to be what it is um but yeah box dye is just creating a slew of other issues and then say it does come out bad and it turns kind of green or kind of orange you can't go to the salon and get it fixed so i think then that's the best that much more depressed i think it's just like this is a time you know the silver lining is we all know that coloring our hair and heat styling is it can be damaging so like maybe this is our time to let our hair heal and just not be vain about it and just throw a filter on it when we're online. <laughs> I think I saw on Instagram today, they have a, a blonde filter that fills in your roots for you on Instagram. Incredible. So, yeah. So that's just what we're in right now. Genius, genius move. Um, you and I were already in the process of letting my hair heal um just from being on tv every day and having it styled like crazy and doing highlights um so we chopped it off which 
it's growing actually now, but um, just to stop styling it for a while. And it actually feels really good to, to take a break. And another thing is hair masks. So self-care yeah. now is very important as we're all yeah. going through this. Hair yeah. masks can be included. Um, yeah. What can people do if they don't necessarily have a hair mask already at home? I know. I think, well, first dig through the cabinets in case you randomly do and you lost track of it. Because I think a mask is something sometimes people buy or they get a sample of and you kind of schlep it aside. Um, so maybe see if you have something. But I would say in the cabinets, I mean, we have to ration, right? Like yeah. food is cold right now. Yeah. Um, but oils are amazing for your hair and scalp. Um, I love just throwing a bunch of coconut oil in my hair and I have it's like triggered by stress too. And I'm not sure if anybody else suffers from that, but if you tend to have almost like an itchy scalp or a dry scalp from stress or weather or whatever, coconut oil is really soothing to massage into the scalp. Okay. Um, so I would say, yeah, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil. You can put olive oil in your hair? All the oils. It's like this fatty, yeah, it's just throw it in. I mean, you got to wash it out, right? Like your hair is going to be a greasy mess, but, um, again, no one's going to see you, whatever. Um, but yeah, it is really good. And I would say if you are doing the oils to rub it into your scalp too, and just kind of nurture the root from where your hair grows. So yeah, look in the, in the cabinets and see, you can mix some honey, which is random, right? You can mix some cinnamon. I mean, it's, it's kind of wild, but you can do egg whites. But again, I think we want to save our eggs to eat. Sure. What a weird conversation. But um, yeah, I mean, my go-to is avocado oil and uh, coconut oil. I love. Okay. And just like put it in your hair, throw it in a bun and do whatever and just wash it out. And like repeatedly doing that actually is really, really good for your hair. Um, what about cutting? cutting hair Ooh. well again okay so what do people own at home random kitchen shears so they're dull um our scissors at the salon are like so sharp they melt through hair so if you attempt to cut your hair with dull scissors it can actually fray the ends and split the ends of your hair and do more harm than good and then we don't want emotional cutting right now, right? Like no, no quarantine bangs. Um, I think that's another one that I'm just going to say, you know, just don't, don't even try. And if your hair is bugging, just throw it in a loose pony or braid with a scrunchie or hair tie, whatever you have. And just kind of, we can't really give energy to that. And hair sometimes is something we want to take our emotions out on right? Because it's something we have control over. So in normal life, if you have a breakup or you're going through something tough, like I'll have a therapy session and we'll talk through it, <laughs> probably decide not to do anything dramatic. So, yeah. um, and that's in salon. So in our circumstances that we're all in right now, I think we just have to like, again, like just humble ourselves and just not even think about that as an option right now. Yeah. Because it's just, it's all going to do more harm than good. And I think we're all going to come out of this and just have the bombest makeovers ever. Yes. <laughs> yes. So everyone's going to feel, I mean, it's just so happy. And I think, uh, and you and I were talking before, it's, it's like, you'll appreciate different things for different reasons after all of this. Right. Yeah. Like all the little things. Yeah. I miss coming to you and I get my little therapy sessions when I'm with you. My hair, my hair misses you, <laughs> but it's, but it's growing. Um, is there anything that um, people should know how they could support small businesses during this time or like the right thing to say? I think one, what meant a lot to me is people did reach out to me, random people from different walks of my life reached out to just ask how I'm doing. And I think small business owners, people don't ask how you're doing. Like you're at the top, you're leading, it's lonely. Um, and people don't, you're, that's not really your role for people to be concerned about you. But there's a lot of times in normal life when you really wish someone would just ask how you're doing and if you're okay or tell you you're doing good. Um, and so 
it meant so much to me to just receive those texts and messages to just say, hey, how are you doing? Um, so I would say, don't fear that. I think we all just need to talk through this. And um, so don't hesitate reaching out. And, you know, I think a lot of businesses, you can maybe ask, like, can I buy a gift certificate? I did that with one of my beauty girls. Um, you know, I'm obviously not going to see her, but I prepaid for my next visit um, to help her pay for her rent at her space. Mm -hmm. um, we've had clients ask, and like, this is the time. You can leave us a Yelp review, leave us a Google review, a Facebook review. That's great advice. Shout us out on social media because we're going to need it. Like, when we come back from this, we're going to need we're gonna need all that extra support. Um, maybe you want to, you know, Venmo your stylist or waxing girl or whatever, uh, a tip in advance, you know, like something, maybe the little. Um, I think at this time, a little bit can go a long way. Um, but the, the best support always is just gonna be word of mouth for us and um, yeah. Well, I will tell everyone I know to make the drive. <laughs> if they're not already there in San Diego, but I already told everyone to go down there anyway. Thank you. You're amazing. Um, no, you're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, I just wish you guys the best of luck, but I know you're, you're going to be okay. That, that's we'll all be okay.